Hello and welcome to Matt Parker's Maths Solutions. I'm Matt Parker and the Maths Solution this time is for the puzzle that Zoe set. So for the solutions to what happened with the card order puzzle, I hand you over to Zoe. Hello everybody, so I'm back with the solution to my card order puzzle. Thank you so much to everybody who submitted an answer or who emailed in their proof or their thoughts. Um, we're going to get started with the submittable bit of the puzzle. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch the puzzle video. There's a link to it in the description below and then come back to this solution video. Um, but for the warm up puzzle, the submittable bit, the answer was four. So if you put four, great work. Here are the four permutations that satisfied the criteria. Um, and we had a grand total of 1,633 submissions, of which 83% put four. So 83% of them got that correct. Um, and obviously Matt Parker's maths puzzle's been going on for a little while now. There are some people who submit every single week, um, but not all of those 1,633 people um, have played before. So I had an email from Harry MCB Sean, um, who emailed to say uh, that this was their first week submitting and they also sent an email in. So shout out to Harry MCB Sean. And here are the stats from Oliver. So obviously we can see 83% of people uh, getting four. The next most popular answer joint uh, with 14 was zero. Um, maybe zero kind of makes sense, I guess. Uh, people are probably looking for a permutation um, and can't find one, so then assume it's zero. Um, but 14, I'm not sure about the significance of 14. Maybe people can put something in the comments uh, and let me know what they think. Um, but here are, here are all the answers that people gave in case that is of interest to you. Uh, but what's really of interest to me is how people attempted the problem. So DJB used good old fashioned brute force and emailed in a photograph um, of pen and paper working out. Fantastic. Uh, but not everybody used, uh, used brute force, so these two sets of contestants sent in an email uh, their logic. The logic being uh, that four and one had to occupy the two central positions. Uh, if you imagine if you've got two or three in one of those central positions, um, then you've got to have at least one number greater than that number on one side, and at least one number lower than that number on its other side. And so if you've got a number greater than it, and then that number, and then a number less than it, uh, then you've got a, a subset of three ascending or descending numbers um, and you're in trouble. So you've got to have four and one in your central positions. There's obviously only two ways you can order four and one, and then there are two ways you can order the two and three on the outside, and that leaves you with the four options that we saw earlier on. And Michael G made this spreadsheet, and you can see at the top um, that they're checking with those inequalities for all of the possible ascending or descending uh, subsets um, that are three long. Um, and if they found a permutation that read false for all of those checks, um, then you can see on the right-hand side you've got that pink false, um, which tells us that, that permutation is a solution to my problem. So I think that's a really nice spreadsheet, um, and I will link to that below. Um, but of course, this wouldn't be Matt Parker's maths puzzles if somebody didn't send in some Python code um, and code in other languages. And I've just chosen this one from Alex Milet, uh, and there is a link to it in the description below. And so Richard Holmes made a really nice observation in the text of an email um, about the solution that I'm showing below. Um, so uh, the observation is that the permutation can be thought of as two pairs of numbers. So we've got the first pair two and one, and the second pair four and three. Um, and within each pair, the numbers are in descending order. But then if we look across the pairs, they're in ascending order. So if you go from number one to number three, so from position one to position three, um, you're in ascending order. And if you're going from position two to position four, you're in ascending order. Um, and crucially, to get a solution to our four card problem, um, it needs to be in this format so that the pattern within the, uh, the pairs is different from the direction of travel, if you like, um, across the pairs. Um, and this observation was all not also noticed by people um, who represented some of the solutions in a, a kind of graphical or geometric way. And so Frank Zucker sent in this representation of the solution, 2413, uh, and you can see that pattern that we were just talking about visually. Um, so between the pairs we're ascending, but then if you go across the pairs we're descending. Uh, so this is the same thing, and I've shown that we're descending between the pairs with these pink lines. Uh, and I made this and I was wondering what happened if I, if I let's say if I swap four and three, what will happen? 
Um, so if I do that, then we get uh, this green chart there. Um, and again, if I put in uh, the dotted lines that represent what happens if we go across the pairs, um, you can see that we are descending between the first and the third number as we were before. Um, but now that we've swapped four and three, we're now ascending between uh, the second and the fourth number. Um, what difference does this make? Well, that means we can now join up that green line with that pink dotted line. Uh, and we've got two uh, sides, two lines, if you like, that are both ascending, um, which means that we've got three points uh, that are in ascending order. So we've got three numbers that are in ascending order and they, they correspond to two, four, three and four. Um, in that green permutation. So we've got the ascending subset two, three, and four. Um, so that's why this, uh, this solution doesn't work. And it's why we need uh, the, the direction of travel across pairs to be different um, from the direction within pairs. Um, so I thought that this, this sort of representation that people were sending in was really nice um, for that reason. Um, and here is a similar one from uh, Tice. Um, here, here are my pink lines to show what's going on between the pairs. And Tice then uses this diagram to show uh, that it's not possible um, to put a fifth card in and still have no ascending or descending sequences uh, with three or more cards in them. Um, and so here is an example of one that doesn't work that Tice found. Um, and to help me work out why this doesn't work, uh, I've had them in my pink line. Um, uh, and now I can see that uh, that blue line, that pink line sort of join up. And we've got sort of two ascending lines so therefore three ascending dots, three ascending numbers, uh, which is three, four, and then five. So this one doesn't work. Um, and uh, the, the idea is, is that uh, wherever you put that fifth card, you're always going to be um, either kind of joining up two blue lines or joining up a pink and a blue line um, or two pink lines, which is going to mean that you've got uh, three ascending or three descending numbers. Um, and so Tice then uh, uses these diagrams to talk about what happens if we go to six cards, what happens if we go to seven cards, and so on. Um, and they found that uh, you, you can always find permutations um, that don't have any ascending or descending subsets with more than three cards in them, um, all the way up to nine, all the way up to nine cards. Although uh, when you get to nine cards, it is quite tricky to find uh, those permutations. But quite a few people wrote in uh, with methods for finding them. Um, and then they use those methods to help them see what might happen uh, when we introduce a tenth card. And one of these people was Bruce Garner, who found this solution. Um, this nine card permutation doesn't have uh, any subsets that uh, have got greater than three cards in it. Um, and actually this looks really similar to the four cards that we were just looking at. Um, instead of two pairs of numbers, we've got three groups of three numbers. Um, and it's, uh, it's ascending within the groups and it's descending across the groups. So something is going on here. Um, and then Lucas uh, said that they had spotted a solution by considering a number pad on a calculator. Um, and uh, one of the solutions that you can find from the number pad setup um, is, is the one written down there. Um, and so the, the numbers within the groups don't have to be consecutive. And here uh, in this nice video, Ed shows us how we can use that grid uh, to find the 789 solution that we saw earlier on. And here is that solution below. Um, and quite a few of the people who, uh, who found uh, this nine card solution um, in a similar way uh, went on to explain why you then couldn't add a tenth card um, and still have no ascending or descending uh, runs that have got um, more than three cards in it. Uh, and, and the kind of explanation sort of boiled down to um, if we take that tenth card, if we put it um, within the first three, so before that third card, um, then well, because we are, well in this case, because we are um, descending across the groups, uh, we're then going to end up with a descending group of four. Um, so we've got ten and then, then a descending group of three. Uh, so that's not okay, uh, but what if we put ten um, after that third card then. So let's say, I don't know, say here, something like that. Well, now we don't have the descending problem, uh, but we do have an ascending problem. Of course, we've got that, that stretch of three um, ascending cards in the first group, and so now we've got four. Um, and so it's not going to work. It's not going to happen. Um, and Lucas, who talked about the number pad, um, said the problem is that when you add that 10th uh, card, you're adding 
uh, you've got to have at least four in one of the dimensions, uh, which is, is kind of obvious, but what, why is that a problem um, is maybe less obvious. If we take that 10 and we add it before the third card, uh, which in, in this permutation is that 9, uh, then it's effectively like we're adding it uh, along the top somewhere. Um, and then we've, we've got a problem. Um, but what if we add it after the third card? Uh, then it's like we're adding it down this side somewhere. Um, and we've got a different problem. Um, so I thought this representation of the cards in the grid and talking about dimensions uh, was, was quite insightful. Um, and uh, Jesse Lloyd uh, has also solved uh, the big puzzle um, by writing a paper and doing some Python code. Um, and so all of these different approaches have come to the conclusion uh, that the answer to the big puzzle is four. Uh, and so I found this puzzle in this book by Martin Gardner uh, and it includes uh, another proof uh, that the answer is four. Uh, a few people wrote in and, and referenced a version of this proof um, in their emails, uh, and I'm going to try and show you that proof uh, by using some animations. Um, and so we're going to start by taking our 10 cards um, and putting them in a permutation, and then looking at, uh, for each individual card, what the longest ascending uh, sequences that ends on that card and what the longest descending sequences that ends on that card. Uh, and so for example, I, I don't know, and choose this card to start with. Um, and the longest ascending sequence that ends on that card, if you're going from, from left to right, um, is uh, the one that goes two, three, four, and then six. Um, so my ascending number, I'll call it A, uh, is four. And then I can do the same for descending, and actually for descending it's, it's nice and easy, so it's just 10 and then 6, so uh, the, the length of the longest descending um, sequence that ends on that number is just 2. Um, and then we can do that for all the other cards as well, so I'll do it for this card as well over here. Um, and this one, so then ascending, well we've got uh, 2, 3, 4, 6, we're going to skip the 5, because that's, that's a drop, uh, and then 7 and then 8, um, so that gives me an A number of 6. Um, and then do the same thing for descending, that, that's nice and easy, so that is 10, 9 and then 8, so I've got a D number of 3. Um, and obviously then there are some trivial ones as well, uh, so that, that first card uh, is always going to be uh, 1 and then 1. And so 1 is, is the lowest number you can have um, for A and D uh, in your situation. Um, and uh, so imagine I want to make my 10 cards um, so that I don't have um, any subsets that are ascending or descending and have more than three cards in them. If that's my aim, then I need A and D uh, to never go above three um, in, in this, this kind of way of looking at the cards. So A and D can never go above three, uh, and you might think, okay, that's fine, uh, until you notice crucially that the A and D numbers must be different for each of the cards in the permutation. Um, and we can maybe convince ourselves of that if we say, okay, let's look, we've got this imaginary card P, um, and its A number is 4 and its, its D number is 2. Um, and then let's imagine there's some card before it um, called M, um, and it's got the same, same numbers for A and D. Um, and if that's true, uh, well, well, first of all, let's say, let's imagine the situation when M is less than P. Um, so if M is less than P, um, if, if M has really got an A number of four, that means it's the fourth card in a, um, a dec an ascending sequence um, from left to right, uh, and that means, because P is, is bigger than it, that P must be the fifth card in that ascending sequence. And so, uh, or at least the fifth card, it could be even, it could be even uh, higher than that. So A, uh, this is a contradiction, A must be greater than four um, if M is less than P. Um, so this, this isn't okay. The D numbers could still be the same. You could have, I don't know, a situation like this maybe, um, where you've got 10 and then 7, that's a descending sequence of 2, and then 10 and then 8, and that's also uh, got 2, so that's fine. Um, but you can't have both of them being the same. Um, but what if, what if M wasn't less than P? What if M was greater than P? What happens then? It's the same idea, but just kind of in reverse. Um, and so if M is the second number um, in a descending subset of 2, uh, because P is, is less than it, um, then P must be the third number, or at least the third number in that sequence. Um, and, so, and so D must be 
greater than 2. Uh, again, A could be the same, but the D numbers definitely can't be the same, and we've got a contradiction. Um, so there's no way that we can have the same A and D numbers for more than one card in our permutation. And so we'll go back to our aim, which is to try and find 10 pairs of A and D numbers where A and D are both less than or equal to 3. Um, but we've, we've got a problem. Uh, there's only three possible numbers for A, and there's only three options for D, and so that means there's three squared, nine different possible pairs of numbers we can have, uh, and they are all shown below. Um, and so we haven't got a pair of numbers for our tenth card, um, so in order to be able to introduce our tenth card, we're going to need to be able to allow A and D uh, to go up to four. Um, and so we can't have any permutation of ten cards um, that doesn't have an ascending or descending subset with four or more cards in it. So four was the answer to um, our big puzzle. Um, and, and four will be that, that magic number all the way up until 16 cards. Um, but as soon as you get to the 17th card, you're going to have the same problem again. You're going to need to have to allow A and D to go up to five. Um, and so generally, if, you, if you've got an A and D number of up to N, that's going to give you um, up to N squared cards. Um, or the reverse of that, which quite a few people emailed in, um, is to say that if you've got a, a certain number of cards, you would take the square root of that um, and then round up or take the ceiling of the square root, uh, then you'll get your A and D number. Um, and so I think this is, I think this is a really nice problem. Um, and it's, it's also got a name, so it's called the Erdős uh, Szekerezs theorem. Probably, almost definitely said that wrong. Uh, quite a few people emailed in uh, the name of the theorem too, so thanks very much uh, for that. Um, I think this is it's coming to the end of the, the puzzle solution video. Um, so this has been the card order solution. Thank you so much to people who submitted and sent things in by email. Um, keep puzzling!